Well, my opinion is um, my opinion is vast and varied because I've been to so many different occupies and they all uh, kind of have a different feeling to them, and some some seem to have a lot more positive energy around them and some of them seem, seemed a little more stagnant with more neg negative energy around them. And the interesting, the most interesting thing to me traveling around visiting all the occupies in the States when I was on tour was how, well, two things. One, how reflective the occupy was of the city itself and the vibe of the city and, and also how, um, how people handle how human beings are very, very inept at handling power and control. That's the main thing that I've seen because watching a bunch of people getting together and trying to create a consensus brings up all the issues that human beings have with each other pan laterally. Like any, you know, any, you put together any group of people and get them to try and make a, a single decision and you get people arguing. So, and, and that's actually kind of a beautiful unifying <laughs> thing about all the occupations is that you saw a lot of light being shed on, on the ego problem and how hard it is for us as people to shed our egos and really just try to think about, okay, the common good, like we're a bunch of people, this is what we need, this is how we think we could all be happier. And everyone has varying ideas on what that path you know, what path to take to get us to that spot. And then, you know, and then you look at what's in between A and B, and that tells you a lot about a group of people. Mm. The biggest issue, probably fear. Fear and apathy. I think those are the two things that are, are really eating away. And you see them both reflected in and against the Occupy movement in the States. And, it, you know, I mean, the thing that I think a, a lot of people have noted, or I've, certainly that I've thought about a lot traveling around watching, you know, the Occupy movement itself hit a lot of resistance among my generation is that there wasn't a single black and white unifying cause and not, beyond a cause there wasn't a single thing to fight against like one single evil power or one draft or one war that uh, that everyone could kind of wrap all their energy in and you know and that kind of that's I think that's it makes the job a lot more difficult for sure, and that's the the main problem facing Occupy and everyone wondering, you know, wandering around saying like, well, what's next? Sure, everyone is upset about the system, but where do we start and how do we fix it and how do we attack this giant, you know, broken system? I have, I have my personal, you know, feelings about all this stuff because I'm generally not very political, is that I think our culture, and I can speak for no one really, I can't speak for Americans, I can't speak for Australians, I can't really speak for anyone but myself and I think what I see, but I see, um, I see people being very afraid of each other. I see people forgetting that the world can work any which way and people basically just accepting, well, this is the system, this is the government. And Occupy has been, if it's made any kind of real positive, lasting effect, it's reminded at least some slice of the population and hopefully a younger slice of the population that you can affect change through action. And you don't have to just take what's fed to you and what's handed down to you from the generation before. And, you know, small changes can have a huge lasting impact if what they're doing is teaching a bunch of teenagers to say that if you get a bunch of people together and actually try and make a statement in the direction of the government or a statement in the direction of the people that then trickles down to the government, things actually do change. Laws get passed, people's minds are changed, you know, 
education can actually, you know, get get rethought and and so on and so forth. So that's a lot of babbling, I guess. But hopefully some of it's useful. It seems obvious to me. I mean, I think the government needs to control and especially needs to give the appearance of controlling what's going on. And it's been interesting in the States, different governments have really reacted very differently. I was, I was at Occupy LA and it couldn't have been more benevolent. You know, City Hall in LA was basically like, go ahead, camp out. What do you need? <laughs> we support you, more or less. And, you know, and then, and then five hours away, you've got Occupy Oakland and an entirely different attitude. And, you know, so the, the local governments from place to place um, all have a different rap. <laughs> uh, I don't know that they would be watching this, so I don't know if I would have anything to say to them. Uh, I think, you know, I think people all have their own ways of coming at things. And I've been, in my own turn, politi politically ignorant about certain things, still am in a lot of areas. and politically apathetic and, and I totally understand and can relate to the why are you bothering mindset because especially as the world grows so vast and and the you know I think the only thing to say to people like that is you know if you're going to stand back and watch just don't get in the way and I think there's a good Bob Dylan lyric about that somewhere. But really, I mean, don't, if you don't have anything positive to add to a group of people or a movement that's actually really trying to force a change of good, because no one disagrees. That's the funny thing, is that most people who are critical of Occupy pretty much have the same idealistic if you stripped it all down, the same, you know, idealistic hopes about what the world could look like. It's not that people who are critical of occupiers say, like, no, 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 like, the government's perfect, just shut up. No one thinks that, but, you know, criticism, open criticism and open, angry apathy can pull a movement down. So what I would say to those people is, if you don't support it, if you don't get it, if you think it's a waste of fucking time, just try to be careful about what you might crush by accident. That's what I would say.